Third Shift presents The Imposter's Guide to Gaming, your quick fix for gaming news. Now, here are your hosts, Eric and Matt. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to IG2G. I am your host, the Million Dollar Matt. Oh my goodness, I'm the best. With me, as always, is Eric. He's got a couple thousand bucks. He's doing all right for himself. And hey, do you guys like apes? Do you like space? Do you like robots? Do you like looting? And do you like shooting? Well, stick around, because we got all that shit for you here on IG2G. Number five. So first up this week, we got something cool that dropped on the 28th of February, developed by Dave Cazillo, published by Devolver Digital. This came out for PC and Switch. Oh my god, it's Ape Out. You're an ape. You gotta get out. If you want to know more about this game, check out Third Shift, episode 128. I talked all about Ape Out. Anyway, this is a cool, stylish game. You play as an ape. You gotta get your way out this giant door. In your way, there's dudes with guns. You can grab them. You can shoot them with guns. You can hold up barricades. You can punch these dudes and make a splatter. The graphics are stylish and cool. The soundtrack is all kinds of like jazzy drums. Think like Birdman, but like hyper frenetic. Every time you kill a dude, psh, symbol crash, psh, 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 symbol crash. Do, 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 do. Gotta get out. I'm a freaking ape. I gotta get back to the jungle. Do, 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 do. Ape out. Number four. Well, not to be outdone by that one, I promised you guys I'd be talking about Anthem, some in depth little hoo ha from the no man that's called me. Mr. Eric, oh yeah, and here we go. God bless it. Anthem came out February 22nd, made by BioWare, published by EA, as everybody knows, because we all want to hate that EA machine and destroy it. God damn it, EA. That's I'm right. going gonna, gonna to post a 1 out of 10 review for Anthem, because I hate EA That's so right. Much. I want them, King, I want them and the, and the EA publishers to fail. I do it. I do, I swear. I really yeah. do, because you yeah. know what? They shut yeah. down Visceral, and I'll never forgive them. I'll never forgive them. Never. Never. (laughs) But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about Anthem, as I promised. All right. Here's the deal. I have finished this game. I have finished all of its side stories. I am now in mostly Masterworks and Grandmaster Level 1, working my way up to get to Grandmaster Level 2, and then, of course, eventually into Grandmaster Level 3. So I got a little bit I can tell you about. You have undoubtedly seen tons of conflicted information all over the board via the reviews via discussions this game's garbage this game's good people are crazy everything in between i'm going to give you my opinion right now all right overall before we go into detail i would say that this is a game you can buy and enjoy and get your 60 bucks worth without any issue It has just enough Bioware story and characters to have a good time with, especially if you play solo. I, In fact, if you just really want a little bit of story and fun times, play solo, because this will allow you to take your time in the missions. You'll be able to come back to the base, You'll be able to, which is Fort Tarsus, and talk to all the different characters at your leisure with no one rushing you, no one talking in between any of this stuff, and you will start to feel the Bioware come out. You will start to feel the attachment to these side characters come out. If you play with other individuals who are all about endgame, you know, the looter-shooter aspect at the end, they're not going to care about this story. They're going to go, hey, go go tag the people, let's get on to the next mission, keep this truck rolling, which is the way they play, which is how, how it always ends up going. If you want story, play solo. If you want a looter-shooter, here's where it gets iffy. Anthem has potential, but it is not there yet. It has a lot of bugs, the loot isn't quite right yet there's not enough loot the uh the the affixes on the loot are broken right now they're adjusting things fixing things but it's still not there the legendaries in some cases are not even as good as the masterworks which are the lower version of said loot which is never good and never feels good if you get a legendary and you're like oh i don't want to equip that you should always want to equip legendaries this is something diablo taught us long ago that they failed when they first launched Diablo 3, but later fixed, and then reiterated, you always want to equip legendaries. This is something I don't understand how Anthem screwed up, but they did. That's okay. Because the feel of the game, getting in your javelin, going onto this mission, when you jump and launch, the feeling that that gives you is glorious. I have never felt better in doing one little animation than I have in that game and launching off and rocketing to where I want to go. The flying is smooth. If you're crashing in the walls, it's simply because you're a bad player, not because the system itself and the the way you fly is bad. 
So I want that to be kind of hushed out. There's been a few people who've been like, oh, I'll crash into walls. And like, well, it's because you just don't know what you're doing. And that's fine. You know, there's nothing wrong with that, but don't blame the system for that. Flying is very smooth. There are a, there's a decent variety of creatures. There's like brutes and scars and scorpions and dominion and outlaws. There's a, there's a good enough batch of baddies for you to be engaged and feel like there's a, a variety for the beginning I feel like if they don't come out with some new baddies within the next few months, it might start to feel a little stale. But right now, it feels really good. The environments are mostly jungle with some caves and mines and, like, you know, factory-type looking places. So while it's gorgeous, it is kind of limited at this time. However, in the story, as you progress, they make mention of tons of different uh, cities and towns and areas, which, if this game survives... I'm sure we'll see a ton of different biomes in the future. This is simply the first one. So in that regard, I think they're on track. And let's see, where else should we go? Got the combat, which I will say the guns, as you've probably heard, are pretty loose. But the game isn't really based around your guns. It's mostly based around your abilities. Getting in there and using your abilities, which I think feels really good, especially once you get to endgame and start getting masterworks that have particular perks which boost certain skills and then you can start really putting together builds and feel really powerful tying in to the abilities and feeling real good i like that the four javelins are very unique the way you play i've mentioned this before but the way you play is very unique from the storm the interceptor the ranger and the classes there's definitely the tanky feel the big shield the big guns on the classes the rangers got that mid-range throwing grenades you know got the uh, jericho missiles using his guns more than the other classes interceptors up there with his blades assassin type and the storm of course is your magician just in the background blowing up things with ice fire and lightning very, very cool, very, very unique in how you play. And, of course, with that comes the variety of builds, as I mentioned, and especially when you get the Mashworks getting very unique and flavored and, and really neat. It's just, it's, it feels solid. And I don't know where, it's like a lot of, it's like a lot of tiny needles poking at the game. And I feel like because of all those tiny needles, it's really turning out to be big. But if you kind of break it down, I don't feel like it is. I feel like the game's mm. solid. The story is more on the side of the games as a service as a whole. So it's not. It's kind of loose. It ain't all there. You're kind of like, what the heck are we doing? What's going on here? But the characters are where the magic is. And that's what Bioware does. That's what they've nailed. They can pull the story together, I'm sure. But at this current moment, yes, it is a games as a service type story. Kind of loose, playing it willy-nilly. We'll see where it goes. If that's what you're hoping for, a real tight story overall, you're not going to get it, but the characters are all there. So I say that this game is worth getting, but you just have to be aware of what you're getting. It's it's a very confusing thing. I would say maybe watch a little bit of gameplay. If you like flying around the javelins, check, You know, hey, there's a perk for you. If you like characters then you're definitely going to like the characters in this one. A lot of great voice acting, a lot of good, you know, the, the face and the animation, all there. Just be careful, okay? I don't. I hate recommending games because it's burned me too many times, but I think this is a solid game, and I'm going to continue to play it. So I hope you guys go in with an open mind. Don't let the naysayers judge it for you, and just enjoy. And oh, oh by the way, PSA, <laughs> apparently... Uh, the game can brick your PlayStation 4 right now, and they've issued out a warning that it can do that. They're hoping to fix it here soon, but just be careful when you're playing, because your PlayStation 4 can be bricked. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to pass on this one then, Eric, Oh no! until I see that patch come through. <laughs> yeah, it, it should be coming through pretty soon, but I'll let you know. I'll, I'll give you a heads up once it patches. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So I'm going to keep it there. I'll update you, you know, as we go, but that's it for now. I'm telling you, I enjoy it. I hope anybody out there who did already get it enjoys it. And if you haven't, hey, Eric says it's good, but who am I? I'm just a jabroni. Number three. So next up, did you miss out on one of the best RPGs of 2017? Because I sure did. Well, here's your second chance to get in on it. Dropping on the 26th of February for 40 bucks for PS4 and PC because the special edition already came out on Xbox One. What? I didn't even know about that. That's kind of cool. I'm talking about Nier Automata, Game of the Yorha Edition, developed by Platinum Games, published by Square Enix. 
it's near automata this is i mean it's it's in the title it's game of the year edition what is game of the year edition it's the game and then all the dlcs and extras that came out with it now this game's only had one dlc which we've covered on a way earlier edition of ig2g as i recall but it's near automata you get the dlc with it and then for each whichever platform you get it on i think ps4 you get well for both you get a whole bunch of customization stuff like visual customization stuff all the little like uh, like the pre-order bonuses and freebies you would have got that's all packed in there now too on psn you get a dynamic theme i think you get a whole bunch of avatars and i think on pc you get some wallpapers but if you missed out on near automata like i did the only things i ever hear about this game are how awesome the story is how like emotional and also like subversive it is because you play through it once you think you know what's going on you play through it again you see it from a different character's perspective and people's lives get flipped turned upside down and like like to take a minute just sit right there until you got to play through it again to get through paths c and d which are where that big meat is it's all about robots it's a post-apocalyptic future robots were made to do things now that their purpose is gone what happens to them you know do they grow beyond that can they grow beyond that Never. You know, existential questions of why am i here why was i made all kinds of good stuff like that if you like that kind of writing that kind of scenario you're gonna love this from all accounts one thing that you know i've still only played the demo but one thing i will always take away from that is the presentation is so unique looking like the menus are really minimalist and like grayscale but it it works somehow something about it just pulls me in obviously this has great graphics Great gameplay, because it's a Platinum Games game, so your hack-and-slash gameplay is actually a lot more fun than it usually is in action RPGs. And then, speaking on subversive, like the story is, the gameplay in Nier is also subversive, because sometimes you're hacking and slashing, sometimes you're like a, a 2D side-scrolling shooter, sometimes you're a twin-stick shooter. It, it, it mixes it up, it throws all kinds of stuff at you, and that's what makes... You know, playing through it all these different times, fun, because you're getting all these gameplay slices, you're finding out more about the cool story and the cool characters and the cool side missions, why you're really doing that, what this guy's really all about. So if you missed out on Nier Automata the first time, here is the Game of the Year edition. It's only 40 bucks, pretty good deal. I mean, the game itself I, is, is obviously still worth 60 if you, you know, that was your only way to get it. Mm -hmm. So it's a good deal. Get it. I really want to get it, but I'm playing Thronebreaker right now. I got Steins Gate Elite still just sitting there because nobody, nobody votes for that on the stream vote. <laughs> I, I got all kinds of stuff to play, but I want to get into Nier Automata. If you love RPGs, if you love, like I said, that kind of like robot post-apocalyptic crisis type of scenario, you're going to want to get this if you miss it the first time. I'm going to get it. I'm definitely getting this version so I can get all kinds of free stuff with it too. Nier Automata, Game of the Orha Edition. Number two. Tom Clancy's Division 2, open beta, came and went. We talked a lot about the uh, soggy bottom drawers and the closed beta. Well, That's true. the soggy bottom drawers are still there, but I feel like they did make some adjustments. I feel like it was less soggy bottom drawers. So, I could so now they're wearing, they're wearing like pull-ups instead of full diapers. Exactly. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So it, it looks a little bit better, I would say, in this open beta. <laughs> Most everything felt a little smoother, a little bit better, except for the deer. I think well, better. <laughs> that first beta felt like shit. Get out of here! No, it didn't. You're crazy. You're crazy. Oh my now, God. now I got, I got a problem though. You're gonna you're gonna hear about it here in a minute. I will say okay. the deer kind of felt a little bit different. Like the deer looked really spot on in the closed beta, but in the open beta, they kind of look more like anime cartoon deer a little bit. So it's, hmm. I don't understand why they would have shifted, or maybe I'm just crazy. It's possible. I don't know. It's not really important. You don't care about the deer. The combat. What? Tell me more about the deer, please. You want to know more about them deer? Okay. Deer, well, deer. I will tell you this. How many, how many points was that buck, Eric? Well, it was an eight-point buck, okay? Okay, good. I think now, see, I, I only saw sevens when I was playing. That was one of my big beefs with it. I was ooh, like, I know that. Yeah, come on. You know there's eight-point, point, ten-point bucks. You know? Well, my big beef with the deer is why were there deer? In, a, yeah. in Apocalypse, we're going to need that deer to eat. So if mm -hmm. people are like, oh, we're trying to forage for food, we're starving. I saw 72 deer in the last hour just walking around. Mm -hmm. I think we could be eating good around here if y'all just shot the deer. That's a, I saw a lot of hyenas, too. I shot them. Why couldn't I, why couldn't yeah, I, I mean, if we strip could the flesh and salt exactly. the wound, man? If we can shoot the hyenas, we can shoot the deer. You can shoot the deer, but you leave the corpse there to rot instead of taking it back, gutting it, 
hanging it up, skinning it, chopping the meat up, and eating it. Mm-hmm. That's what we're supposed to do. Kill animals and eat the animals. It makes sense. Yeah, know? like the animals that shoot guns at you, trying to resist your, your well, invading force. Yeah, right? Shoot them I'll and shoot eat them those too. animals. I don't care. <laughs> I'll eat them. I'll, I'll eat, eat them all up. I've heard human tastes good. I don't care. I'd try it. Yep, yeah, whatever. So, I digress. <laughs> <laughs> This was basically a cleanup version of the closed beta. Things looked a little nicer. Things ran a little bit smoother for the most part. They added uh, an extra level, so instead of going to 7, you got to go to 8. They added a whole extra mission, which was really cool, really nice mission. Looked nice. You got to play with the Last Sons, who are a bunch of basically military jarhead yahoos going around. Kind of like the... um, the, uh, I was going to say the... The the Last... Lost Battalion. Lost Battalion. Last Last Battalion. There we go. From the uh, previous division, it was nice seeing some militaristic, you know, attitudes going on there, and them trying to flank you and do all that cool stuff. Not to say the other individuals don't try that, but they were real specific about I'm gonna flank him, gay, cover fire, and then one would get up and shoot. Because you know what you do is you like to announce your plans to the enemy before you do. I'm it. aiming at him with a sniper rifle <laughs> yeah. from this building over here. <laughs> I'm on the left side. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm going to get him. He doesn't know. <laughs> I'm reloading my gun. Hopefully nobody runs up on me with a shotgun. Co- right. ah! Cover me for ten minutes, please. <laughs> I'm, having a, I'm having a poopy moment. <laughs> Stress poop. My drones are getting extra soggy bottom me. Oh, my God. Uh, in a firefight, you got to poop sometimes, you know. Happens. This is why real, you wear those pull-ups, real deal. Man. That's right. That's why they got all soggy bottom drawers. It all makes I'm a sense. Big kid now. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. Oh, too much. Too much. Uh, the guns felt a little bit better. I will say, I still stuck mostly to the light machine guns and the submachine guns because I just feel like those ones are rock solid. The marksman rifle is pretty decent, but I'm still that assault rifle. I don't know what it is. It's still just funky for me mm-hmm. i don't get it you didn't like it either i don't know what's yeah. going on the pistols seem ineffectual they don't really kill yeah. anything or do anything they're pretty much useless yeah that's what i hated in that open beta i'd be like well assault rifles doing nothing and here he's running at me pistol and i remember my quick draw mcgraw days of the original bah, 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 bah. Uh, i still here roll away <laughs> roll away <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's exactly what happens. And then they murder you, and you die, and then you go all the way back. It's frustrating. Mm -hmm. And I said it before, and I'll say it again. These baddies in this one don't play around. I mean, if you are not on your toes and paying attention, they will outmaneuver you. They will come and flank you. They will rush you if they think you're not going to be ready for it. It's it's Mm -hmm. nuts. And I appreciate that, but when you're playing solo, it's very frustrating sometimes because if you die, you're going all the way back to the safe zone, wherever the heck that may be. And who knows if you're going to make it back without encountering seven to eight different patrols. You might as well just call it and go do something else at that point, and that sucks. But that's not the game's fault. I think they want it to be a more intense experience. So I, I'm down with that. It's just if you're playing solo, you've got to play way more strategic. You're not just running and gunning anymore willy-nilly, flying off the seat of your pants. You are not standing. You will be in cover. They definitely made it so if you don't utilize cover, you're a dead man. And that's what they wanted, whereas I don't think Division fully got that. It was to the point in Division where I could basically just walk and murder everything without too much of an issue. And I think they're really trying to back that up and get back to, you know, cover fire, cover fire, cover fire. Although I, I feel like in, well, the closed beta that I played, I feel like your your little armor stack mm-hmm. made it such that, like, I felt like in certain points in original Division, there were some of those bosses where if you were out of cover for like half a second, you were down Mm -hmm. versus this. There were a lot of times when like my cover stick didn't work. So I'd be standing directly across from a guy and he'd empty his clip into me and I'd still be mostly okay. He'd just start doing health damage. So I don't know. I I would would say they're finding a a decent balance there. I like that you can stand out a little bit because you got that armor chunk Mm -hmm. of your own, but yeah, I get what you're saying. And you have the ability to repair the armor. So that's nice instead of just your health. I really appreciate that. But I'm just telling you right now, in some of those, especially the end mission, yeah, you try any Tom Foolery and you're dead quick. So you just have to be any careful. Tom Clancy Foolery. Yeah, any time. <laughs> That's right, man. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so with that being said, pretty much everything else stands from what I said from the closed beta. And unfortunately, that includes my biggest problem. That is the, the loading in and the, the texture problems. 
Yeah. They're still there. They're still there full force, 100%. They did not change it. There is no iteration on it. And I'm beginning to believe that it may very well be they just didn't make this game for the original PlayStation 4 base system. I'm I'm almost 100% certain that they base this around PC and then PS4 Pro and Xbox One X. Because I go into zones and it's just polygon chunks everywhere. I have to stand and anywhere I run to, I have to stand there and let it all, the textures all load in. And it takes sometimes up to a minute to do that. Mm -hmm. So if I'm running and gunning, I'm just in a polygon PlayStation 1 fest, just shooting polygons. They'll be like the enemies, their heads will just be triangles and their arms will just kind of be jiggling at their sides and they're like not fully formed yet and they're just like running. Sound like some silent hills. Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, the deer, just like these little brown squares, just like going up and down, running away. And the cars are just white uh, rectangles, you know, and I'm like, oh, God, no. I think your PS4 is about to kick the bucket, buddy. This sounds like how mine used to render San Andreas back in the day. <laughs> just driving. There's no road. There's no buildings. Just bloop. Oh, there's cars. Okay. But see, I would say maybe that's the case, except for Brent, a buddy, friend of the show, mm. was playing with me. And he... He's connected to you. You're, you're oh, the host. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm the one who did it. I'm the one who did it. He said, uh, he says that's all he sees, too, is just tons of texture, pop-in problems. And he has a base PlayStation 4 as well. So yeah. I'd like to get some more input. If anybody out there has checked out the betas and they have the old school or the pro, letting me know what they're getting from it. Because yeah. I love Division. I'm getting this game. But I'm just worried that I'm going to be getting a very subpar experience because it was not made to handle all that on the PS4 regular. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I hope it's addressed, but I'm really starting to worry that it's not going to be. And it's very yeah. jarring and annoying when I go into a cutscene with a character yeah. and she's just like this triangle head, pyramid head with like one eye loaded, the other eye's not. And she's over here trying to be serious in a conversation. I can't focus. All I see is this crappy, weird nightmare image of a texture. Yeah, that, that I will say when I got to the... There's the there's the one lady at the treehouse who's the hard drinking, you know, oh, I lost my daughter, she's missing. Like that whole cut scene, like I think it starts with her pouring booze into a, like a cup mm-hmm. and it's close up on that. Like the whole background was just like mud. And I was like, oh. that was the one time I really noticed it bad. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, look, this door popped in, this drawer popped in, this piece of the wall popped in. Oh, okay. And and, and then there it's like, She's like, oh, it's a hard knock life. I'm like, but you're a weird texture person. You <laughs> yeah. live in a weird mud wonderland. I don't take you seriously. We warped to the PlayStation 2 or something here. Mm. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Terrible. So, yes, there you go. There you have it. I enjoyed my time with it. I think the game feels great. It's going to be an awesome adventure. They've promised, I think it was 70 hours worth of gameplay, uh, storyline, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, from launch. That's that's an insane amount to offer. That's RPG yeah. quality right there. And with the vision, the story is good. I actually enjoy, you know, all these rogue agents and what the heck's going on and trying to capture them and figure it out and help the people. I dig it. I can dig it. I can see it. I want that scenario to play out. I want to be the 35-year-old tubby jub turning into a division agent. Yeah, and save the world. That's what I make my character. A little bald man with glasses and... You know, average build. Yeah, I'm just going to get in there and kill people. Yeah, save the day. Shameful. I'm a, Shameful. I'm a hero. <laughs> I'm a gosh dang hero. <laughs> so that's it for now. Of course, the game launches March 15th. I will be playing it, and I will beat it, and I will review, well, not review, but give my thoughts and opinions on that at that current time. So there you are, people. Nice. Look forward. Please, as they would say, please look forward to this title. Number one. And last but not least on the releases this week, here's a game I've actually been interested in for quite a while, so I'm glad that it's out on console now, even though there are a couple issues with it. But dropping on the 26th of February for 40 bucks, developed and published by Paradox, the development team, and then Paradox Interactive. For PS4 and Xbox One, it's Stellaris Console Edition. Now, if you think Paradox, you should know grand strategy games. Super in-depth, super... Super, you know, mine in the details. Super, you got to adjust this, this tiny things. But this is kind of a more of a 4X approach. Now, it, you can go deep into this, but think of it like civilization, but on the, the grand scale of the galaxy. Sci-fi universe. What's really cool about this is 
if you think of my civilization parallel, you pick your ruler, and then you have to play like a certain way. Like, if you play as Gandhi, sure, you can get a military victory. You can play however you want. But those leaders have certain bonuses that are tied to how you want to play. But in Stellaris, you get to make your own race, essentially. You get to pick, you know, what kind of alien you are, like mammalian, reptilian, robots, all kinds of things. And then you can pick all kinds of little avatars that you can be. And then once you've done that, and you, like, you've named your people, you get to pick all your specific traits that you want. So you could be... You know, you can be slave traders, you can be hyper-industrialists, you can be really religious people, you can be pacifists, whatever. You can pick all these positive and negative traits and then, you know, build your play style the way you want to play. And what's co- what, another thing that's cool about it is, I mean, there are victory conditions, like, you know, own so many planetoids or, you know, build up. I'm not sure exactly what they are because the point of the game is not really to reach a victory condition. It's to kind of... You know, you clunk down into the galaxy, here's your space, explore, expand, meet other races, figure out how to work with them, because they'll all have those same, you know, not the same traits, traits, but they'll, uh-huh. yeah, they'll have all their different traits, work, work with them how to diplomatize and expand and explore. You know, you can do combat in this game, obviously, because it's a 4X game, one of the things is combat, but it's, I, I feel like the gimmick of the game is more making your own cool race to play how you want to play and then figuring out how your race sits in this galaxy with all these other races and diploma, you know, diplomacy with them, trade with them, exploration, figuring out what you can do with your planets. So it's just, it's really interesting. And the fact that it's a paradox interactive game kind of scares me off a little bit because when I think of paradox interactive, I think of, you know, you have to adjust every tiny percentile of every single thing. And that is still true to a, to a degree here in Stellaris, but the sci-fi setting is what makes it interesting to me. And of course, this game does look gorgeous, has a great soundtrack, and from all I've heard, it actually does work pretty well with a gamepad, which you wouldn't expect, because again, Paradox game, you have a million windows, a million items you can, you know, click and through, but apparently they've got like toolbars up on the top and the bottom. It's easy to scroll through to find what you need, pop that window open, you know, if you're sending ships exact, you know, if you're sending a ship from this area to over here, you know, you got a little cursor on screen to kind of represent uh-huh. your mouse. I've heard the only problems with the gamepad aspect are when you have tons of planetoids and like systems that you control, you got to scroll through them with the D-pad in a big list. But other than that, I've been hearing that it's actually optimized pretty well for console. The only issue with that is if you are a big PC player, this is going off the 1.7 build or edition of Stellaris. Whereas on PC, you're already up to, I think, what was it, 2.0, they redid combat, and then 2.2 was something about your empire building. Like, they streamlined a lot of the planetoid management and things like that. So if you're coming from PC and and are expecting to have the exact same experience on your console, you're not going to have that. But it is still 1.7, so they have ironed out a bunch of the bugs from launch. So if you just want to get some Stellaris on your console, this obviously this is the way to do it. And from all reports, in all aspects, you're going to have a good time. Just don't expect the latest and greatest from PC. So this is another one I'm really interested in. I don't know if I'll have a chance to get into it anytime soon, but definitely on a PS Plus sale. Let me jump in and get some Stellaris. I'm going to make a weird frogman that's a pacifist but likes robot slaves and has like a really religious system or something. I don't know. Well, see, that's just what I was thinking, man. These are those games that in concept sound really fun to me. But, of course, I don't have the patience to play them because I would love to make a super aggressive religious race and then mm. see if I could convince all the different planets and galaxies, etc., to come under my religious umbrella. And if that mm. failed to work, just kill them and subjugate them and force them into my religion and then see you know, how close that is to the current system and what we had here in the in our planet, in Earth, you know, mm-hmm. and it'd be, it always amuses me. I want, that's what I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if you like weird experimentation like that, this is definitely the game for you. And that's, that's what excites me most about it. I mean, a little intricate systems, that's not really my jam, figuring out what tiles to mine on the planetoid. Don't like that stuff. Mm-hmm. But if I can make a weird race that looks goofy, like there's a weird, like, like amoeba-looking dude, like a weird shrimp thing with like all these tendrils all around it, just crazy stuff, making crazy combinations, and just seeing how it works. Stellaris Console Edition. Pick it up for your PS4 and Xbox One. Pew pew. Empire.
imposter's topic of the day. So for the topic of the night, it's going to be a little shorter, but it's something I wanted to bring to you, everyone's attention. All right, bring a little awareness to this. It's a game called Torchlight Frontiers. I think we've talked about it at some point in time in the past, ages ago. So. You know, you don't, don't think, think I so. could have swore I've brought it up before. Maybe it was just like, hey, here's a here's an announcement that we're working mm-hmm. on something called Torchlight Frontiers because I haven't seen or heard anything about. Yeah, this. Yeah, well, that's what it was. It was literally a. Hey, they're going to make a Torchlight Frontiers game. And it was basically around it. And then I didn't hear much about it for a long time. And it forgot yeah, and it slipped it. away. And then I remembered. A spark came to me. And all of a sudden, I remembered. I went ahead and followed them on Twitter. Went ahead and got on and started doing all the usuals with it. Found out that they've been doing dev updates and Twitch streams and all this stuff. And they're moving along quite nicely. In fact... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, I hate to interrupt, but... You're telling me that a game in development actually has updates and things they're like showing people, yeah, that they're oh, yeah. working on stuff, yeah, like, like cool art like concepts and, and, like, and gameplay, and showing you like as they get new characters, they're showing you what they can do and changing and reiterating. And, what? That's yeah, nuts. You can't do that. I what? No, no, I don't know, man. It's like it's a mystery to us all. Jeez. <laughs> All right, I won't interrupt anymore. All right. I couldn't, I couldn't, you couldn't resist. I no, couldn't resist. All right. I'm a bad person. So, in fact, the closed Alpha 3 begins March 5th, which is probably, well, as you're listening to this, it'll be going on. Yeah. So, there you go. You're not in it, unfortunately. Probably most of you are not in it. But don't worry, because I didn't get in either, because I found out too late about it. I signed up. They did not send me an email. I'm, they must not know who I am. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> did you tell them you were associated I should, with third you know, shift? I should have. I should have. I really should have. Any of the who's, getting in there, checking out these streams, I started to go, oh, my gosh. Why have I just not been paying attention to this title? If you like Diablo, you should like Torchlight. All right? Just let's just say that. A lot of you probably know what Torchlight is. Torchlight came out a long time ago. It's some devs who did worked on Diablo 1 and some other stuff you might know. Um, there was that one game that was a so big rage for a little bit, but had issues. I don't remember. It was Fire Hellgate or Hell something. Hellgate London. London. Hellgate something London, like yeah. The guys who did that and Diablo 1, you know, they, are, they got their own little team here, did Torchlight 1, and this was always in progress to make what they're making right now, which is Torchlight Frontier. So they did that. They did two, which integrated some more, you know, player, you know, player uh, activities, getting co-op going, da 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 da, to an extent. They got the pet system, which allows you to have a little pet buddy who comes around right. with you. He can, he or she, whatever you want to associate it with, can attack, do all sorts of cool combos, things, but also take your loot back to town, so you don't have to go back, which is fantastic. Best. Mm-hmm. Yep. They have that function in Torchlight Frontiers, except for they changed it a little bit because they said they really wanted your pet to be more of an accessory to you while in the dungeon instead of just basically, oh, he's back, give him more loot, get out of here, buddy. So they've changed it up a bit so you're not getting as much loot anymore. So that way you're in the dungeon longer and your pet's actually there doing you know attacks and et cetera, et cetera, with you, and then yeah. you send them back. But the quality of the loot's higher, and there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of technical stuff that you can go check out in the streams that they're talking about. But anywho, it's a Diablo S game. You got the top down going, the top down look going. You go into dungeons. You got so far they've announced a Dusk Mage who harnesses light and dark magic, and you have to balance it out. So you have to cast light and dark and keep it going. And then they've got the Forge, which is a cool clockwork robot looking dude who's your, like, warrior class type. He's swinging blades, you know, around, doing all sorts of cool stuff, taking tons of hits, and you got to manage, like, his exhaust system. So when it builds up by doing attacks, then you release it, and it explodes, and, uh, like, all sorts of grenade and explosion-type attacks. It's really cool. Uh, Yes, I I was looking at the Dusk Mage, obviously, but I saw a bunch of gameplay for the Forge, and I went, no, that is really cool. I I think this is nice, so... We'll be checking that out for sure. They've got other classes they haven't announced yet, so I'm looking forward to hearing more on that. The graphics are, they look really nice. They've got a definite uh, colorful, cartoonish look to them, and that's how mm-hmm. Torchlight 1 and 2 basically was. This is that, but just cleaned up even more. Looks really nice. And what I find most interesting is the they got like a world map, and it's got like your harbor town where you start off at it gives you a cool little intro story of you arriving in a boat and oh you're gonna save the day help out da 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 you start off in like a goblin forest and it's a whole zone and it's got these little 
areas that you go to, basically dungeon areas, on this cool little mini map looking thing all the way across like 13 of these things. So you get your gear, you go into the dungeon, you beat that dungeon, you get to move on to the next one. And like I said, those are procedurally generated, so they're different all the time. But anywho, as you go through them, get your loot, once you've completed it, there's a boss at the end. Very typical kind of stuff here. You beat him, you get to go to a whole different biome, a whole different area. So nice. then there's going to be 13 more of these dungeons. And of course, if you don't know Diablo-type games, the goal is to get through all these, get your loot all the way up, beat all these bosses, complete the story, and then start farming loot. And the reason why I like this system so much is because when you have all those little areas, and they've got tons of them, that's a variety. You know, They'll have daily missions where they're like, hey, go to the fo- Goblin Forest, you know, 1-3 area, go through there, make sure you find this or do that. And it just it allows for more variants, which keeps you interested and wanting to play more. They didn't show off too many. They only really showed off the Goblin Fortress. They've promised several more zones, and each with you know roughly you know, looks like thirteen ish areas to go through. Lots of different bosses, mm-hmm. which in this latest stream they did showcase one of the bosses, one of like the littler bosses in the uh, Goblin Forest. Awesome, full of mechanics. He does like really cool different bashes. Think Zelda. Mm-hmm. Where the boss like hops around and then he starts winding up his big old mace. Then he does a huge flame attack which ripples out fire everywhere and you have to avoid the fire. Then you have to jump to get off the crash, not jump to get off the crash, but you don't know, move out of like the crashing waves. Come in for mm-hmm. two attacks, you got to back up, that sort of thing. The strategic boss fight. It's not just random crazy crap and you just go in there and, mm-hmm. and go to town. Looked nice. really fun, yes. This game changes what they're all about because... In the previous ones, it was just your standard, I play by myself or I play with a friend or two. In this one, you can still do that. However, in all the hub cities, you'll be able able to see and interact with all the different players. So it's got like an MMO quality. So when you're in these towns, there's going to be players everywhere running around, doing things, buying, selling, trading, all that good stuff. And then when you launch off to those little sub-dungeons I was telling you about on the minimap, you can go alone. You can go with up to eight people in the regular, you know, dungeon forested areas. But in the actual, like, boss dungeons, you can only take, like, the raids or whatever you want to call them. You can only take four other, up to four players. So for the big end dog stuff, it's going to be four. But for the open world, just collect, collect a thon type areas, up to eight. Or solo. Whatever floats your boat. Cool. And I imagine there's going to be public access. Or if you want people just to randomly fill in. Then you can, I'm sure you'll be able to set to public. I don't know this for sure, but I assume it's kind of standard stuff right now. And if you want to go by yourself or just with you and Frank or you and Henry or Susie, you can do that as well. I'm sure it'll be all those standard systems. The loot, if you don't know, is the typical white, green, blue, purple, legendary, da da You know how that all goes. Mm-hmm. I don't know, man. It looks really good. I don't think a lot of people, and the reason why I'm talking about this is because I don't think a lot of people are talking about it. I feel like it's kind of just, it's there, and it's there for the people who are interested. But there's no there's no coverage on, like, you know, the big the big sites. I think IGN did a little something, like, six, seven months ago or something. That's pretty much it that I know of. So I wanted to make sure our people knew, man. Okay. But I feel like that's kind of the way that Torchlight 1 and 2 went. Like, I didn't know anything about it until it was way back in the day. I watched Total Biscuit talk about, you know, Torchlight 1. And I didn't really know that Torchlight 2 was even coming out until, again, he did a video about it because I was following him big way back in the day. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, he's not around anymore to tell me about Torchlight Frontiers, so I had no idea this was even a thing at all. So you are 100% I right. I am going to get you there, man. I am going to get you there. <laughs> Thanks, Total Batten. Total, total, total Batten. Batten. Honoring Total Biscuit. May you rest in peace, good sir. You just need a top hat now. No, 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 no. The top hat over actually your, might make me over look better over, over my headphones and my bald head getting sucked into the abyss. <laughs> <laughs> your head would just be like here. This is all we would see. I would have to get a white top eyebrows. hat. A white top hat. See, with the black band right there instead. There you go. That would work out. Be like, why is Eric's head, head getting cut by this little part? Well, exactly. What's understand. going on? It's so strange. I don't know. <laughs> it's like a green screen, but it's a black screen. <laughs> so, anyways, <laughs> geez, old Pete's. Like I said, March 5th, they've got the Closed Alpha 3 going. And what's really cool about this Closed Alpha is that it's permanent. So anybody that gets to take part in this, their characters are going to stay with them. 
Nice. From now till launch. So there's no more resetting of characters. They will actually get to keep these individuals. And as you know, if you play a lot of betas, it sucks sometimes because you're like, okay, I'm doing all this. And yeah, it's fun, but I'm going to have to do the same crap over again. And then the next one, the next one, and then at launch, yep. start over again. I'm going to be burnt out. It's not going to be as fun. This is it. If you got in this one, it's for realsies now. You get to not only test it and have fun in the early uh, areas, but you get to keep that character, the gear you got, the progress you made, all the way up to launch through beta up into the live. And I'm jealous because I really want in there and I really want to check it out. Mm -hmm. But I missed the boat. Hopefully they said they'll be adding some more in later. And as they go to kind of, you know, fill out the servers and get the information that they want. So they said... You know, if you didn't get in this first wave, there will be a second wave, and then there's always the beta. So go get signed up for Torchlight Frontiers, people, because it's an awesome diablo S type game made by people who actually worked on Diablo. So there you go. I can tell you I've played Torchlight 1 and 2. I enjoyed yeah. those games. They were a lot of fun. They were good looking. The loot experience felt right. It felt there. Hey, I'm going to talk about it more eventually when it gets closer and closer. Let's see, even I'll jump on that because I played Torchlight 1 and 2, had a ball a little bit more with Torchlight 1 than 2, but I'm not a big Diablo person. Like, I played a little bit of the PS1 version. I'm not a Diablo diehard, but even I loved Torchlight 1 and 2. So if you if you like looting, if you like any kind of, like, looting experience, like shooting loots, if you like Borderlands, if you like anything like that, give Torchlight a try. I mean, you can get the original 2 for super duper cheap. Oh, I'm sure. And then keep an eye out. For this one mm-hmm. indeed so there you have it that's it that's it we got it we got the show done we did it everybody we hope you had fun <laughs> pew, pew, no pew, no pew, dude pew. we still gotta wrap it up oh imposters wrap up so what do you guys think about torchlight frontiers are you looking forward to it do you like weird space aliens do you like robots do you like apes do you like looting and shooting let us know what things you enjoyed from the show what other things you'd like us to talk about and hey if you got any questions comments concerns send us all of that via email info at thirdshift.me tweet at us at thirdshiftme or just i mean i don't even know what facebook is anymore but you can find us on it it's under third shift Indeed you can. And while you're checking us out on Facebook, why not head on over to the wonderful Patreon that we have set up where you treat it just like a little old tip jar. You like what you heard, you thought you made you laugh or got some great information, whatever the case may be, please consider throwing us a buck, two bucks, five bucks, or the coveted one million dollars where we'll open up a food line, quit our jobs and run it, and put babies into bottles and sell them on the shelves. Will they be live, dead, fake? Who knows? That's to be determined, folks. You're taking it too far. Now, oh, right? I, I'm scaring far. people. Oh man, it's a joke. See, it's a no, joke, see, everybody. It's they'll, a joke. They'll be alive because you got to clink on the jar and then they'll roll over and, oh, yeah, and protect the, you from the weird whoa, invisible whoa, thing. Yeah, and then they send up the little retractor flashlight looking photo bomb mm-hmm. thing. And then like something weird goes down your throat, yeah. and then the baby goes thumbs up yep. and then it comes right back out and you go oh, i'm alive i did yeah. it thanks baby in the jar and then when you get sucked down into the blackness you just go to like an underworld sea adventure thing and then it's like subnautica instead and who knows good stuff <laughs> if it's too scary up there just go just underwater. Go underwater. It's a peaceful adventure <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> well whatever the case may be anything and all things does help us out we really do appreciate it as matt would say <laughs> Ah. Dang it, don't steal my uh, I had to that time. But if you cannot throw us any cash and all that, we understand too. We just appreciate you taking a listen, taking a peek at what we're up to. Maybe consider going over giving us a five-star rating on the old iTunes, thumbs up on the Facebooks, likes on the Twitter feeds, some comments, questions, mailbag things, any and all those things. Help us out. Make us feel great about doing what we do. And we really hope to hear from you because I want to know if you're getting all that cut-up division crap, Okay. Let me know. I need to know, everybody. <laughs> and let me know if Division 2 sucks. No, it's not going to suck, I, I'll man. be your champion. Stop it. It's, it, looks, it looks like trash. You're stupid. <laughs> your opinion thing, sucks. I hate it. <laughs> but one thing that won't suck and that won't be stupid is our very next episode, because this podcast drops every two weeks on Tuesday, so we'll be back in your ear holes on the 19th of March for our very next episode. You can find that episode on iTunes, on Stitcher, on Podbean, on Spotify, and on YouTube. And as I always say, if you like what we're doing and you'd like to help us out, please give us a like, a rating, a review, a comment, a subscription, any kind of good thing on any one of those good services because it does help us out. And I don't know, as Eric would say, brrrr. <laughs> Dang it, man. <laughs> 
It's not nice, man. There's nothing left to say that, man. I'm just leaving. You know what I mean? What's it? What we say? Don't don't, don't forget, forget to, to say. Save. Cry, baby. <laughs> <laughs>